The brand new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros have absolutely astonished us with their performance. Yet you can configure these machines any way you want them with more cores and more RAM. However, for storage, the actual baseline amount of storage you get is only 512 gigabytes. Is that enough in 2021? And should you consider picking this as your baseline storage? Well, personally, I believe you should. And let me explain to you why. Hi, it's Matt here. So that's right, with the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros, there are loads of different options you can pick with in configuring how you want your MacBook Pro to be. However, one thing what kind of stands out straight away if you pick the baseline MacBook Pro for either the 14 inch or the 16 inch is you only get 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, a lot of people out there, if you're a creator like myself, you're probably thinking that's not a lot of storage. And to be honest, it isn't. This video that I'm creating right now will probably take up about half amount of that storage once it's edited and exported and everything like that so it isn't actually that a lot so mainly we should probably pick ourselves a higher amount of storage the problem is with that if you look here is that it's really really expensive to upgrade from 512 gigabytes even to one terabyte not alone two terabytes or four terabytes that most of us actually have or would like to have actually inside their macbook pro it gets really really expensive but don't worry, I think you should actually still pick this 512 gigabyte option and let me explain to you why. Now the main reason why I would say stick with this 512 gigabyte storage option is because of these options that I have right in front of me. Yes, all of these, what you see in front of me right now, they're all external hard drives. Now, before you go and switch off this video, I know everyone's gonna go, oh, external hard drives, I absolutely hate them. They're the worst things ever. The thing is what you've got to understand is, is the price difference between external hard drives, their performance, what they can give you, and also the performance if you picked a higher tier amount of storage on a MacBook Pro. So going up to one, two, four, or eight terabytes. So what I've got here is three different drives in front of me. All of them are two terabytes. Let's go through them and let me explain about all the different drive options and actually how much they all cost. So the first drive that we have is the Seagate drive you can see here. It's a two terabyte drive option, like I already mentioned, all of them are two terabytes. Now this drive, you can pick it up for about 63 US dollars, so around about 60 US dollars. And it's a traditional, normal, spinny hard drive. What I mean by that, it's not a solid state drive, it's got a disc that spins around inside it, so you will hear a tiny bit of a whirring noise when it's in use. Now these drives are super cheap and super great for backing up kind of your standard kind of document and pieces like that and also if you finish with like some picture editing or video editing and you want to stick all your archives and backs up these drives are really really good now one thing i will be testing is things like video exporting and running video libraries off this actual hard drive in fact i'll be doing it on all of the hard drives but with this drive i just wanted to quickly show you, this is the cheapest one here it's got usb free on it you could actually get a USB free to USB C end if you wanted to do that but you wouldn't be able to really kind of run this at kind of Thunderbolt speeds to get full maximum capacity out of that but you might not actually need that as you'll see later on with the benchmarks that we are doing in this video. The next drive we have got is this SanDisk drive right here. Now this is a solid state drive and you can pick this up on Amazon for $225. So that is a really good price for a solid state drive, especially that the read write speeds are around about a thousand megabits per second. Whereas this older sort of Seagate drive here, it actually runs at about 130 sort of megabits. So it's much more slower. This you're gonna be getting about sort of eight, nine times faster sort of speeds. On top of this as well, it's Thunderbolt compatible as well. And you also get a Thunderbolt cable as you can see right here. It's not just your standard USB-C cable. It actually does have the chip in either end. The great thing I love about this drive, it's nice and small. It's really, really portable. And you will see it later on how good this drive really is in some of the benchmarks. Now for some other people out there, this drive might not be enough for you. 
So the next drive up is this one here. It's a Sambrant Rocket. Now this drive is incredible. You can get rewrite speeds of around about 3000 megabits per second. So that's about three times the speed of this drive here. It is far more pricey. It does come in at $360. So you can see it's gonna cost you a fair bit more for this drive, but you also get Thunderbolt compatibility with this. And it also works with all the latest brand new Mac Books. In fact, all of these drives today all work with it as you will see. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a Final Cut library on all three of these drives I've just shown you and we're going to do the same export of exactly the same video and we're going to see what we actually get back. So for this Final Cut Pro test, what I'm going to do is export one of the videos I've made recently. It's a Windows 11 on an M1 Pro, an M1 Max MacBook. Check out my channel if you want to see this video because I actually have got it uploaded. But what I'm going to do is copy this actual whole project and library over between all my different sort of hard drives like my SanDisk one here, my uh, Spinny drive, I've also got my uh, Sabrent drive here. I'm going to copy it to all the different drives, the exact same library, and we're going to do exactly the same export and that export is simply we're going to go up to the top here and what we're going to do is we're going to do a YouTube and Facebook sort of export we'll go to settings here we're going to leave everything on as their kind of standard settings and I'm going to run this so as you can see it's 4.24 gigabytes so I'm going to export this onto my desktop and I'm going to time this now on my iPhone and we're going to see how long it takes so the results are in and this is absolutely incredible. Obviously, if we look at the Seagate 2 terabyte hard drive, this was the slowest one because it's not an SSD drive, but still it did it in nine minutes and two seconds. However, if we look at the Sabrent Rocket, the SanDisk, and also the internal drive of the MacBook Pro, what's meant to be a super speedy drive now, it's actually really, really close. In fact, all of the times came within around about seven seconds of each other it was absolutely unbelievable and the main thing i would probably take away from this is that no matter what kind of ssd you pick whether this is the internal one built into the macbook pro what's meant to be the most fastest one out there or even if you pick yourself the most expensive fastest sort of um, ssd out there an external one like the sabrent rocket there isn't going to be much difference if you just picked a kind of traditional kind of ssd like the um, sandisk extreme SSD that I have here. Like I said, everything is within seven seconds of each other. So I don't know about you, I actually am quite shocked by the results there with Final Cut Pro. So what I decided to do after this was actually connect up these drives into Black Magic, doing the disk kind of benchmarking on that and having a look at the speeds there. So the first test I actually want to do is a speed test on the actual built-in hard drive. So I've already got this selected and you can see there's nothing else connected to my MacBook Pro. So I'm going to start this. So let's see the speeds. So look at that, a write speed of 6,300 and the read speed's about 5,000 there. So that is really, really remarkable to see that. So it's dropping down a little bit, but we did just see that it was about a 6,000 and then also about a 5,000. So I'm going to stop the test there. And then what I'm going to do next of all is connect in my sort of Seagate drive that we've got here. This is the spinny drive and let's see what that does. So the next drive I am testing right now is the Seagate drive. So it's this one right here. And I've also got it in a dongle so you can see it's all connected up. It's going to move it out of the way there. But as you can see, the kind of speeds I'm getting is a read speed of about 126. It's near that 130 mark there. And then the write speeds as well. We have actually hit about 100. Um, it's not showing it right now. I'll see if it will do it one more time in a second. But um, it actually is getting write speeds of around about 130. There we go. The read speeds drop right down as well. But trust me, it was getting around about 125, 130 speeds but they have dropped down it's depending on the sort of different tests that happen there we go there's your right speed it's gone back up again but let's move on then to the next drive so the next test I want so the next drive I want to test is the SanDisk drive. So this is the smaller one. Uh, this is the SSD drive. So I'm going to connect this up now. And this is using a Thunderbolt connection. So with this in the connection now, the USB, and it's all connected up, what I'm going to do is select this extreme SSD by going here, select the actual drive, the extreme SSD, open that up, and then we're going to start doing a test on this one. And straight away, look at that, you've got 900 megabits, you've got 700 ish there, and this should increase up to about a thousand during this test here. So it is slowly increasing the read write speed. 
So there we go, another 900 there. What's the read doing? Reads a bit more higher there, a little 740. The right on the other drive is a little bit more slow again. You can see here, it sort of plays around. So I'm gonna probably say around about a 900 megabit sort of write speed and around about, possibly about a 740, 750 um, sort of read speed on this drive. So it's quite incredible to see this. And also that it was funny that with the Final Cut Pro export that the actual speed was really, really quick on this. And it was very similar to the internal drive. Well, let's test out the last hard drive then. So the last test is for the Sabrent rocket that we have here. I'm expecting some really good speeds of probably about 1,800 write, 2,700 sort of read speeds if I'm correct there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this drive, going down to it here, and we're going to click open, and we're going to click start. So straight away, yep, yeah, 1,700, 2,600 read speeds. Let's do that test again, 1,800. 2,600, yeah, 2,700 near about. So yeah, those read write speeds are super incredible. But like I did say, it was interesting to see with the Final Cut export, with the SanDisk, this drive, and also the built-in hard drive is to see what the kind of different speeds we were actually getting. But there we go, there is a disk speed test on all four of the different hard drives, the internal and the free external drives. So sure enough, the results came through. Obviously, this one is definitely the slowest drive, the Seagate. The SanDisk, yeah, it's much more faster than this drive, but then obviously the actual kind of uh, Sabrin rocket drive is the fastest drive out there. But as you saw with the likes of Final Cut Pro, the SanDisk is probably actually still worth getting over the actual Sambrant with the amount of performance and actually the cost of this drive. And I think at the end of the day, the end conclusion what we are seeing here is actually the drive to probably actually get is actually the SanDisk. Now, obviously Apple have boasted about getting um, faster kind of SSDs inside their brand new MacBook Pros. But for a lot of creators out there, you can see straight away that really that speed is not really being tapped into. To be honest, you might as well not buy yourself the kind of higher amount of storage. And personally, from my point of view, and remember these are my own opinions, I would actually buy the SanDisk drive right here. Yes, this drive here is absolutely fantastic for doing all my backups, but for things like apps and things like that, I will actually install them actually onto my main MacBook Pro. So for example, like Final Cut Pro, Lightroom, Photoshop, they will remain on the actual system and I won't actually be storing any of my actual data actually on this machine. The other cool thing I've got to mention right now is the availability of iCloud. So you could sign up to iCloud, OneDrive, there's Dropbox, so you could stick kind of documents and things like that on that instead of actually storing them on your MacBook Pro if you did pick that 512 gigabyte option. But at the end of the day, as you can see here, all three of these drives are absolutely fantastic. So this drive definitely is good for doing backups if you want to store everything onto it. And once you're not using any of your documents regularly anymore, I would definitely recommend getting the Seagate. But having said that, if you are going to be a creator and everything, personally, in my opinion, as you've just seen here on this MacBook Pro, what has an M1 Pro inside it, I'd actually pick the Seagate. Yes, this is slightly faster, but for the amount of money and the amount of difference in doing kind of rendering and exporting, same with video editing or even photo editing, this drive is far more worth it. So personally, going for the top speed tier in kind of um, exporting and things like this and read write speeds as we saw in Blackmagic, going for the fastest always isn't the best sometimes. So yeah, definitely do check out these drives and let me know your opinions down below in the comments as well. Well guys, it's also time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also at the same time as well, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews and comparisons, please also do hit that subscribe button followed by the notification bell. Until next time guys, I will see you really soon. Bye bye.